Dissension The final expansion of the Ravnica block. Dissension was released on May 5th of the year 2006, was the 38th Match of the Gathering expansion, with the symbol of the set being another piece of ironwork similar to the previous expansions with three branches coming out of the center. This set had 180 total cards divided into three groups of 60 cards each that was separated into rare, common, and uncommon. Dissension was also sold in 15 card booster packs, fat packs, had a book of the same name published alongside it, and had three pre-constructed decks. The blue-white Azorius Ascendant, the green-blue Simic Mutology, and the black-red Rakdos Bloodsport. In terms of themes and mechanics, protection would be expanded in this set. Protection that was seen in Dissension was protection from monocolor cards, multicolor cards, along with enchantments, which is seen on the card Azorius First Wing. There were split cards, which was a single card that had two distinct spells, each with its own effect and mana cost, along with the guild-based mechanics of the set. Forecast was an activated ability that a player can use only when the card is in his or her hand and only during his or her upkeep. This card is usually associated with the colors of blue and white, with an example of Forecast being seen on the card Sky Hussar. Graft was the ability where permits enter the battlefield with a certain amount of plus one plus one counters. When another creature you control enters the battlefield, you may move some plus one plus one counters to that new creature. This is usually associated with the colors blue and green, with an example of this card being seen on the card Sporeback Troll. The last mechanic, Hellbent, essentially makes a card better if the controller has no cards in hand. Hellbent is usually associated with black and red, with an example of this mechanic being on Anthem of Rakdos. The storyline of Dissension is a story where the streets of Ravnica are soaked in blood and madness. Guilds fight each other and monsters ravage the city. As Ravnica is slowly getting destroyed, it is realized that all the chaos was a well-versed and calculated plan. After much action from the spirit Agris Coast, the guild pack spell is broken and the character Sadek is arrested, exposing himself and the house Demir. Three total cycles were part of this expansion overall. The first cycle were the Eidolons, which were two two spirit creatures with a mana cost of four, can be sacrificed for an effect, and can be brought back from the graveyard to the hand whenever you play a multicolored spell. The cards featured in this cycle were the white colored Aurora Eidolon, the blue colored Enigma Eidolon, and Trophic Eidolon which consisted of black, Sandstorm Eidolon which consisted of red, with the last card being the green colored Verdant Eidolon. The next cycle were the uncommon split cards, which were cards with two effects on them and associated with allied colors. The cards included in this cycle included Pure and Simple, Trial and Error, Supply and Demand, Rise and Fall, along with the last card being Hit and Run. The last cycle were the rare split cards, which were also cards that had two effects on them, but were associated with enemy colors. The cards of this cycle included Research and Development, Bound and Determined, Odds and Ends, Hide and Seek, with the last card of this cycle being Crime and Punishment. You also had two mirrored pairs and three true reprints. There was the mirrored pair Guardian and Enemy of the Guild Pack, which were spirit creatures with protection from monocolor and multicolor cards respectively. The other mirrored pair, Vision Skeins and Delirium Skeins, were a sorcery and instant spell respectively, which affect players' hands. Vision Skeins causes players to draw two cards, with Delirium Skeins forcing each player to discard three cards. True reprints consist of the card Seal of Doom, which was first seen in the expansion Nemesis, Thrive, which was seen in the Prophecy expansion, along with the last card being Seal of Fire, which was also seen in the Nemesis expansion, just like Seal of Doom. When it came to the best cards overall, there were numerous cards that stood out and affected many formats over the years. The first card was Muse Vessel, which was an artifact for 4 mana and has the ability of targeting a player and forcing them to remove a card from the game, along with being able to pay 1 mana to play a card removed with this card. This card was only seen in 3 professional decks and was seen in control decks as a form of hand disruption. The next card was Simic Sky Swallower, a 6-6 Leviathan creature with Flying, Trample, and Shroud, which allows the creature to not be able to be a target of spells or abilities. This was seen in 4 professional decks and was mostly seen in Pro Tour Charleston for the Team Block format. While it's a big expensive card, when it is on the battlefield, it is hard to remove from play. There was Tidesprout Tyrant, a 5-5 Genie creature with Flying and the ability of when you play a spell, return target permanent to its owner's hand. This was seen in reanimator decks for both Legacy and Vintage, as it was cheated on the battlefield by other means since its total casting cost was 8. While it wasn't too powerful in terms of power and toughness, it was essentially a repeatable bounce card. Protean Hulk was a 6-6 green creature with the effect of when this card dies, you may search your library for any number of creatures with a total converted mana cost of 6 or less and put them on the battlefield. This was seen in 5 total professional decks and was included in 3 top 8 decks in Grand Prix Columbus for the Legacy format. Its best performance was where it was part of the winning Legacy Hulk Flash deck, where it essentially won Grand Prix Columbus in 2007. 
Grand Arbiter Augustine IV was a legendary human advisor that has the effect of white and blue spells you cast, costing one less mana to cast, and the effect of your opponent's spells costing one more mana to cast. This card was seen in six total professional decks between the formats of Standard and Team Block. This card was also part of the Esper Control deck that helped win the Team Block event of Pro Tour Charleston back in 2006. This card is also used quite a bit in the Commander format as it quickens your spells while slowing down your opponent. Proclamation of Rebirth was a white sorcery card that will let you return up to three target creatures with converted one mana or less from your graveyard to play. It also has the forecast ability to reveal this card and return one creature with one CMC from your graveyard to play. This card was mostly seen in Martyr and Elf decks in the Modern and Extended format. The best that this card has done was where it was included in Elves that helped win GP Hanover in 2009 for the Extended format. Court Hussar was a 1-3 blue Vidalcan Knight creature that has Vigilance and when it enters the battlefield, look at the top 3 cards of your library and put one of them into your hand and the rest at the bottom of your library. You must also sacrifice this creature unless you use white mana to cast it. This card was seen in blue white weenie and blue white control decks for the standard, extended, and team block. Court Hussar was also part of the blue white control deck that had a top 8 finish in Worlds 2006 for the standard format. Demon Fire was a red sorcery card that has the ability of dealing X damage to a target creature or target player. If a creature died by this card, it is exiled instead. On top of that, it had the Hellbant mechanic where if you have no cards in hand, this card can't be countered and the damage can't be prevented. This was seen in deck styles such as Boros, Zoo, and other mid-range and control decks as well. This card was seen plentiful in Pro Tour Charleston, along with being part of a top 8 deck in Worlds 2006. Dovescape was a blue-white enchantment spell that whenever a player plays a non-creature spell, counter that spell, and that player puts X 1-1 bird creature tokens with flying into play where X is the spell's converted mana cost. The best performance that this card had was at Pro Tour Valencia in 2007, where it was part of the second place Enduring Ideals deck for the extended format. This card also gets used in a few commander decks as well in order to disrupt a strategy and get numerous counter tokens on the field. Another enchantment, Utopia Sprawl, was a green enchantment aura that can enchant a forest and when it enters the battlefield, choose a color. Whenever that enchanted forest is tapped, its controller adds one mana of the chosen color. This is mostly used in Titania commander decks and only has seen a few instances of play outside that format. It was, however, a part of the winning limited deck that won Pro Tour Prague back in 2007 which also utilized the colors of black and red. You also had the Shock Lands, which would finish the block of dual lands that started in Ravnica's City of Guilds. These lands came into play tapped or had two life paid for to come in untapped. These were played a lot in multiple formats and in some cases served as alternatives for the alpha and beta dual lands since they could be obtained with fetch lands. The Shock Lands of the set included the blue white hollowed fountain, the green and blue breeding pool, along with the black and red blood crypt. Trigon Predator was a blue and green beast creature that has flying and when it deals damage to a player, you may destroy target artifact or enchantment that player controls. This was seen in over 30 top 8 professional decks as it was used mostly in Legacy as a sideboard card for heavy artifacts. The best that this card has done was in Grand Prix Chicago in 2009 where it was part of a main board inclusion for the Legacy deck called Next Level Blue. This card also serves a good purpose in Commander as artifacts are very common in the format. Infernal Tutor was a black sorcery card that lets you reveal a card from your hand with the same name and you get to search for that card. It also has Hellbent, which lets you search for any card and put it into your hand. It has been seen in over 40 top 8 professional decks, where it was seen in decks such as Teps, Ad Nauseum, and Storm. One of the best performances that this card has been a part of was in the Legacy format, as an inclusion in the Ad Nauseum deck that won Grand Prix Ghent in 2012. This is also part of the winning Legacy Storm deck that won Grand Prix Prague back in 2016. Ghost Quarter was a land card that could produce one generic mana and can tap to sacrifice itself to destroy a target land. Its controller may also search for a basic land and put it onto the battlefield. This deck was seen in over 150 top 8 professional decks for its land destruction purposes and has been used in a multitude of formats. It was part of the collected Bant deck that won Grand Prix San Paulo back in 2017, where it played alongside cards such as Noble Hierarch, Path to Exile, Thalia, Kitchen Finks, and of course Collected Company from the Cons block. The last card in this list was Spell Snare. This was a blue instant spell that counters a target spell with converted mana cost of 2 this card was included in over 200 professional top 8 decks, as it was the counter spell of choice, especially in the Vintage and Legacy formats. One of the best inclusions that this card was a part of was in the Vintage format, where it was included in the deck called Tez Oath in the Bomb 9 Vintage main event. This card was also an inclusion in the deck called Canadian Threshold, where it helped win Grand Prix Atlanta in 2012 for the Legacy format. As of the recording of this video, a sealed booster box of Dissension is worth around $375. So, there you have it. 
All you need to know about Dissension. If you enjoy this episode of Card Anthology, make sure you leave a like and share the video. Be sure to also subscribe to the channel for more videos such as this one, along with becoming a patron through our Patreon page in the link below. Check out the MTG Timeline video for more about the lore, along with our most recent video about the top 100 best performing cards in Magic's history. If you missed the last Card Anthology episode over Guild Pack, be sure to click on the link in the video description to check it out now. The next episode will be over Cold Snap, so be on the lookout for that episode soon. With that being said, this is Coach over here signing out, and I will see you all next time.